Hey guys, it's Core Ross, and today we're unboxing Geekom's A8 Mini PC that they've sent over for their 21st anniversary. So feel free to check out their website because they're going to have a lot of deals on. And the model I'm looking at today has 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM. It's got a Ryzen 9 8945HS, so of course a mobile chip, and it's got a 2 terabyte Gen 4 SSD along with Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. And of course, this comes in a small package as that is the mini PC right there. It is tiny. And I'm also super impressed, you'll get to see this shortly, is actually the power brick. So on the last little mini PC I checked out, which was Intel, it had a massive power brick. This one's tiny. And I love that because the last one took over my laptop spot as a mobile kind of editing rig. And this one's gonna take over that one spot because the compactness and the power of this mini PC is freaking incredible. So what comes in the box? Well, you have a Visa mount, which allows you to hide this behind a monitor, but you could easily jerry-rig it to mount it to a desk or a wall, whatever you might like, and this PC could easily disappear. You've also got a power brick, an HDMI cable, and a power cord. Now let's take a look at the I.O. On the front, you've got a power button, headphone jack, and two USBs. One is high power. You've got a media card reader on the left-hand side. And then on the back, you've got a power. You've got HDMI, USB-C, and I think that's 40 gigabyte a second. You've got Ethernet, two USBs, Type A's, another USB Type C, but 10 gigabit along with an HDMI. And it's... Cool, it's very small, and it's actually kind of interesting to compare this to the other Geekom that I've reviewed, which is the Intel version, which is in blue. I prefer the silver, and you'll notice the difference in overall size. I love the silver one, more rounded edges, a little bit smaller, but this is where it actually makes a big difference in the height. So I think as my little mobile uh, you know, editing rig, this is gonna replace the blue one, the Intel one, for sure. And this is the other thing, the power supply. So the Intel one, huge power supply, like absolutely, I would say easy, four times the size of the little AMD one here. And that again is gonna make it easier to transport. Now the Intel one, you can put an extra SSD in it. So that may be as a reason to get it. But for me, if you're buying a mini PC, you're getting it because you want it as many as possible. That's the freaking selling point, right? That's where you put in the extra money because miniaturizing stuff is more expensive. So of course, I would go for something as small as possible if I'm going this way. Now let's take a look at the insides. So it's four screws underneath the feet to release the bottom plate. Then you have an additional plate there that is uh, basically a heat sink. It helps to keep the drive and a few other things a bit cooler. And you can see it's got a few thermal pads to help move that heat around. And we've also got a little cable connecting to the top, which is the Wi-Fi antenna. So if you take this off, make sure not to, of course, break that. But then we have four more screws to remove. The Intel version was a little bit easier to take apart, i got to say, but this isn't much harder. Also be noted, you got to take that little black bit of tape off too, so you can get the plate off without damaging the antenna piece too. And then underneath that, you've got easy access to your M.2 drive, which is two terabyte in this one, and the 32 gig of DDR5 RAM, but you can put in there 64 gig if you want. Now let's talk about CPU performance. So I'm currently on a 13 Gen i9 and my previous editing rig was a Ryzen 3700X. And you can see the difference between the top end desktop chip and the mobile chips that these mini PCs use. But what I'm amazed by is of course, they beat the 3700X, which was my old editing rig as of last year. So that is incredible because that's a full on desktop with a desktop cooler and these are able to outperform that CPU. That to me is incredible for the you know the size. Like we're talking easily one one hundredth of the size of that desktop computer. That's mental. But when you compare single core performance, that's where things get a lot closer between the full on desktop and these mobile chips. So now let's talk about gaming performance. So in the last video where I went over and did my conclusions of the Intel little mini PC, the one thing it really lacked was gaming performance. The Iris graphics that are on the Intel chips are just rubbish. You can barely play Rainbow Six Siege at 1080p with them. So I was kind of expecting the AMD one here with better integrated graphics to do a little bit better, but it did a lot better. So this actually is able to run Siege at 1440p with a selection of high and medium sends, which is incredible. 
and you can get over 100 fps if you really want to like you bring this at 1080p you can be running over 100 fps so that's amazing so i decided to run two different versions here one is 1440p with a selection of high and medium settings with no fsr which is the upscaler you can use and i also played the game in direct x version and then i also did it in the vulcan version with fsr on but i did notice something there was a little issue which was at the bottom left corner it kept saying low vram which is not actually the case because the apu can use whatever it wants from the ram on the motherboard which is of course 32 gigs so it was able to use the maximum texture setting in game without a single issue but that warning would persist in the vulcan version even though it wasn't actually a problem now that ram is allocated automatically and in some systems you can go into the bios and select a different value but unfortunately in this machine's bios you cannot change that like i said though the apu does allocate whatever it needs at any given time i just unfortunately could not get rid of the warning even though it wasn't impacting performance at all so seriously impressed with the gaming performance here on this mini pc as it absolutely blows intel out of the water however i will just take a step back and give a reality check here we're talking about the same gaming performance you can get from a gtx 1080 which is an extremely old card at this point so apus are getting more powerful and definitely amd has made major improvements but you're still talking about when comparing it to a desktop not being nearly as powerful again with this machine it is an extremely powerful production pc and of course in a tiny form but it is not really dedicated towards gaming however this one is definitely quite good for some medium gaming especially in esports titles now let's move on to conclusion so first of all i'm not getting paid any money for this i turned down any affiliates there's links in the description below and there's a coupon code for a discount but i'll get no kickbacks because i don't want anything you know changing my review here so basically the way i see this is this pc is cool it's an expensive mini pc of course if you're miniaturizing something it gets more expensive but overall the simple takeaways here is that if you want better graphics performance go for a full-on desktop and get yourself a dedicated gpu if you're wanting something that is mini and has a bit of power behind it and you do want a little bit more gaming performance then this thing is incredible and if you're more focused on productivity and video editing then i'd go for the intel version and the intel version can be extended with a 2.5 ssd if you want to put it in the top of it so there's a lot of good options here and yeah seriously impressed with this this is actually a lot better than i thought it was going to be for gaming performance so i am extremely impressed with it but i would go and of course watch a few other reviews out there i know kudos has been getting some of these mini pcs as well so i'd go and check out his reviews too but anyway guys thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you next time